Hello and welcome everyone to a new webinar or online info session with the American College of Traditional Chinese Medicine at the California Institute of Integral Studies. My name is Hannah Strack and I'm the admissions counselor for the ACTCM programs. And I'm very excited to talk with Dr. Eric Rosenberg, who is our uh, local tutor at ACTCM. And uh, we're talking to him about his time at uh, Henan University of Traditional Chinese Medicine, and we have some photos to go along with that. So, thank you so much, Eric, for being with us today and talking about your experience. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we're going to dive right on in since we had a few technical difficulties to start. <laughs> um, when did you go to Henan, and who did you go with, and how long were you there? So I went uh, to Henan University in March uh, 2015 through the summer. So I left mm -hmm. at the end of July. Uh, I went, I was in the master's program here at ACTCM. Mm -hmm. And um, I went with five other students from my master's program. Mm -hmm. And we were the first group of students from, from the US to go study at that school. Uh, so it was really interesting. They did have some other international students there, mostly mm -hmm. from South Korea. And uh, there were maybe like two Australians there when like mm. towards the end of our studies. Sure. But we were the first uh, American students, so it was really interesting. It was really cool. Um, and so yeah, so we were there for a semester. Mm -hmm. uh, and which I, um, how did they define a semester? How long was that? Um, from it was from the end of March, beginning of April. I, I we had a few weeks to kind of like get acclimated before um, clinic started, mm -hmm. and then. It was through uh, the end of July, mm -hmm. uh, mid, mid of July, and then we stayed like another week or two afterwards. Just to, oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. So about your time there, uh, yeah. what was a typical day like? What were your clinic shifts like? So uh, the university has three affiliated hospitals, mm. and uh, we stayed, we primarily stayed uh, at the older campus. There's a, there was a brand new facility, a new campus mm. that we, that the dorms weren't built yet but now those have been built and so future groups go there but we stayed at the older um, campus uh, which was walking distance to the hospital so oh, um, yeah so there the the rotations changed every couple of weeks mm -hmm. and you get um, placed with different doctors uh, also we had interpreters that were um, PhD level students or master's level students in this in the school there mm -hmm. so, and they um, they spoke pretty good English. So they were able to translate also a lot of the medical terminology that was going on mm. in the clinics. Uh, so, but they put you to work. So you go, you start right away in the clinic um, and pretty much from eight o'clock in the morning until six in the evening working. Wow. Um, a lot of observation, some clinic shifts, you able to do some hands-on work as well. And uh, you get a one hour lunch break during the spring months which was like march april and then once it started getting hotter they change their hours and mm -hmm. give you a two-hour lunch break which is oh, really wow. nice yeah. so you when it's really hot you just get to like have lunch and then maybe go back to your room and relax or after an extra yeah. hour um but yeah so um the clinic rotations uh, depend on which doctor you saw or you were paired with uh, but we were split up we were six of us so we were split up into mm -hmm. two groups of three um and i guess i could Kind of segue into like what the clinic ex clinical experience was like. Um, sure. And um, yeah. how much time was spending class versus in the clinic? Classes were, I believe it was. It's hard to. I think it was like once every couple of weeks we had like a lecture mm -hmm. class, um, and usually it was um, pr pretty much just for us. Sometimes they had other mm -hmm. students. We weren't. We weren't really part of like the. Um, the academic programs that were already there, I think maybe once or twice we sat in on um, current classrooms, but usually they had guest lectures just for our group. Mm. Um, and so it was, you know, but that was a lot less frequent than the clinical the clinical part of it. Um, yeah, and in the clinic, um, you know, there's inpatient clinical, there's inpatient clinics, and there's outpatient clinics. Uh, for example, the first clinic that I started out in was with this uh, older doctor she, who should come out of retirement to start working again. Mm -hmm. And her specialty was in facial paralysis. So we, mm -hmm. there were a lot of patients there with Bell's palsy mm -hmm. and then also um, there's a stroke rehabilitation clinic. Mm -hmm. So, but it was an outpatient clinic. So people would come in um, every day, every morning, and we'd see the same patients usually for you know 10 days in a row. Um, 
it was great because we got to spend at least two weeks, sometimes longer in each rotation. So you really get to track some of the patient's progress and see um, how they've been doing after That's getting great. acupuncture on a daily basis. Right. Um, but yeah, so that clinic was great. Um, our, that doctor was willing to let us uh, needle some of the patients and the patients were also willing as well. Um, and usually the clinic shifts are based around the doctor and what their specialty is. And then they also have other um, students from, you know, Chinese students there working. And so we kind of just got to tag along, you know, and then we'd be given tasks to do or just watching. And then usually the doctor would explain the treatments or talk about certain diagnoses and then uh, translators would be right there next to us kind of going through what they're ta- what everyone's talking about and give us a little bit of history about the patient or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second part of the the next rotation I did was uh, an orthopedics department. It was a tween clinic. Mm-hmm. So that was a lot, a lot of hands-on. Um, you know, the way that that doctor organized his clinic, it was also an outpatient clinic, was um, the students would like warm up the patients doing massage for about 20 mm-hmm. minutes. And then the doctor would come, doing tween and then the doctor would come around and do like adjustments, some similar like chiropractic adjustments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that was a really interesting clinic because it was, um, Multidisciplinary. Disciplinary. Disciplinary. Right. Disciplinary. Thank you. Um, there was like a there was radiology department there uh, for X rays. There was a Twina clinic, and then across the hall was acupuncture. And then they were also doing like topical herbal placements. So that was um, part of like a pain management clinic. Um, and it had, we had like the whole floor of the hospital. So sometimes they say, oh, you know, go across the hall and check out the acupuncture, or mm-hmm. you know, go see what they're doing in the herbal. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool to get to see that, um, and the amount of patients that come through those those clinics. You know, um, in an outpatient clinic like that, you could see in one morning before you know lunch time, you could probably see you know up to like fifty patients or something. Wow. Um, yeah. So it's really fast paced, and you get to experience a lot in a very short amount of time, mm-hmm. um, and you get to really build some great relationships with the people there. Um, we had the same translator throughout. So um, I got to go to his hometown, you know, wow. you know, visit his family and stuff. And so it was really cool to kind of get that cultural experience. Well, like now I have like a lifelong friend in China, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and so uh, with the, back to the clinical part, there is also a, a inpatient clinic. So patients that are, are battling cancer um, and they're, you know, in the hospital bed. They, the interesting part about that is you know, they use a lot of Western medicine mixed in the hospital. So they'll be on chemo and then they'll also be getting herbal treatments as well. And, you know, the hospital makes all of the herbal formulas in-house. They have a whole floor dedicated to cooking herbs. And then the nurses will come by with a cart and like bring everyone their herbs and stuff. So I have some pictures. We'll see some of that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's really interesting, the delivery system, the way that it's all completely just in one hospital setting rather than here where, you know, uh, you go see an acupuncturist and you go see the doctor and maybe go see an herbalist or your acupuncturist has to, you know, give you some herbs to prepare at home. They do everything for you right, right there. So it was pretty cool Mm -hmm. to see that as well. Excellent. So, uh, before we show those photos, I have a couple more questions for you, Eric. Sure. Uh, first, what was something that surprised you the most out of your clinical experience, out of your, um, personal experiences in China, what what was uh, most surprising? I think one of the most surprising things was the sheer magnitude of the school. Um, mm-hmm. Hunan University is huge. Uh, the, the campus is amazing, G- giant campus. The, the building, they were like kind of boasting that it's like the longest building in China or something. It's really uh, long building and yeah. the campus is huge and so many students and it's like Do you, do you have a comparison uh, in the United States to uh, It's bigger than like UC Berkeley's campus which was just yeah. pretty big. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm trying to think of like the number and the population of the students but it's like oh. in the thousands sure, and yeah. it's kind of crazy because you know here acupuncture school is relatively small master's program and there you know they go through a whole medical program they start at a bachelor's and go all the way up to phd and yeah. it's um and yeah the, the amount of the facilities were, were quite uh, overwhelming and just like wow this is this is all dedicated to chinese medicine this is so yeah. cool <laughs> um and then the other thing that was really surprising to me was you know the the 
the age range of the students. So there were mm. students that looked like they were just out of high school. And then there were also students that were like in their thirties that were like finishing, you know, their doctorates and stuff. So that was also mm. uh, interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Um, also, this was, this was my second trip to China, so it was a little bit less surprising to me, but um, mm-hmm. some of the conditions in the hospitals and, and clinics, uh, they're, you know, they're not the highest standards. Um, and so sometimes, you know, there would be areas where, you know, there is just really dirty and, and you know, things like that. So it's just different culturally, I think, some of the things that we would consider uh, part of, like, you know, hospital experience and what they what is considered a hospital experience there, mm-hmm. uh, and so that was sometimes to me that was a little surprising. Mm-hmm. But I think that they're actively, you know, uh, kind of changing that right at, at, in the, at the moment. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think that was pretty much it. Also, surprised at how much I really loved all the food. Oh there. yeah, yeah. I mean, there were some things that were really gross, and then uh, <laughs> things that were just amazing. Uh, yeah. And I would eat dumplings like every day for lunch. Mm-hmm. It's really cheap. Sure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then what did you do for fun? What yeah. was something fun yeah. or cool you discovered? Yeah, food was great. Uh, I always love that. We traveled around a lot. Um, just the city, Zhengzhou. I mean, is a huge city. Something like mm-hmm. seven or eight million people there. Uh, so there's plenty of night markets you know you take the train around the city mm-hmm. uh, they have a nice metro system that's pretty easy to to manage mm-hmm. um also you know china has a pretty awesome fast uh, train or uh, like express r- the railway bullet train? the bullet trains yeah okay. so we were able to go to beijing which was like a th- three or four train hour train ride away uh, mm-hmm. kaifeng which is another like historical city that was close by mm-hmm. uh Zhengzhou is like right in the middle middle of china mm-hmm. um in the north so it's a pretty easy place it's kind of like a great hub to be able to get around to other cities um so on the weekends you know when you don't have clinic it was pretty easy to jump on a train um and manage that and just be able to go somewhere for the weekend or for you know and just you just find like a hostel or something to stay mm-hmm. overnight or something. yeah awesome. yeah um i did have one of our one of my colleagues one of my classmates that was with us he spoke mandarin so that was one of the things that was challenging if i if he wasn't there i would have been it would have been way more challenging mm. uh even with the translators so I, one of the things that i really wished i would have done was like learned a lot more chinese oh yeah preparation sure. um, because even with having someone with me that, that spoke Chinese it was, or Mandarin, it was hard to uh, to get around sometimes. And, but you know, you get by. It's just, sure. it's just it's kind of makes it fun in a way. Sometimes yeah. challenging but fun. Yeah. Well, I'd love to jump into some photos here that we have. Any reason that people can't see them, this, then let me know. But we'll just start from the beginning. So this is the front of the school where I talk about the longest building. So this is mm-hmm. the when you the entranceway to the school. That's a statue of uh, Zhang Zhongjing, who's like the historical uh, doctor in Chinese mm-hmm. medicine. Uh, it, in Hunan, they really pride themselves on this is like the birthplace of Chinese medicine. Mm-hmm. So uh, this doctor wrote the Shang Hanlun, which is like a classic text. And so there's a tribute to him at the, right at the front of the school. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's so the, that building is where all the classrooms are. And then past that, there's more buildings with dormitories and, you know, fields and, you know, there's because there's lots of sport activities and things going on at the campus as well. So that's just kind of showing the magnitude of the campus is giant. <laughs> this is me um, treating one of the doctors. My favorite doctor, the one I mentioned, my first shift, her name is Dr. Yang. Oh. She had come out of retirement. She was, she was like 80 years old. Mm-hmm. And she, after each shift, a long day, she would always have me do some tweena and like oh, give nice. her a little massage at the end of the day. It was really oh, fun. Cool. So they always, the other students thought that was really funny, so they would take a picture of them. Oh, cool. That's us with her, uh, you know, uh, all the doctors okay. usually want to take photos with you. Okay, then the, those at the top are, are the current students. Yeah, these, the these were my classmates, um, Melissa and Nicola. And um, yeah, you know, so you have to wear your, your uh, whites in the hospital. You get a name tag. It was funny that our name tag said that we were foreign doctors even though we were students. So some of the patients were really wanted to get treated by us because they thought we were like special really? foreign doctors oh, traveling. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the lecture classes, um, you know, just sitting at a desk. It was an orthopedics class, uh, learning how to look at x-rays, read x-rays. Mm-hmm. This was uh, that Twina clinic. So um, 
you know, oftentimes the patient would come in and have their x-rays already with them because oh. they had a previous appointment and the doctor would have to send them down the hall to go get x-rays. And so they'd go to radiology, they'd come in with their x-ray and then, you know, doctor take a look at it and then, you know, try to figure out a treatment plan based on that. Sure. Yeah. This is one of the labs where um, they were processing herbs. So there was, there were laboratories where students work and kind of do more kind of experimental uh, work with, with herbs and making different um, concoctions or tinctures and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then there was also the, the dispensaries, which I have a picture of as well. So this was one of like the classroom labs. Oh, yeah. This was a dispensary. So there's multiple people working in the dispensary filling prescriptions. Mm -hmm. As you can see, all of the bags in the front, mm -hmm. all of those bags are to be filled. So you, there's like so many mm -hmm. herbs being processed through oh, yeah. the dispensary. Yeah. And all of the shelves in the back are all filled with raw herbs. So it was, it was wow. really busy. I remember I took a video of these nurses uh, filing filling these prescriptions they're just like super fast oh they, yeah they put everything in these metal trays uh -huh. and then they and then once everything's all mixed in the tray they like dump it into the bag and it's like everyone's doing everything super fast it was really really crazy they had this efficient uh, system hmm. i thought this was funny so every morning uh, you can see the clocks is eight in the morning every morning before a clinic shift the doctors and nurses would all do a little bit of uh qigong to like stretch and just get ready for the day. And I know mm -hmm. we always participated and I always thought that was really fun because, mm -hmm. you know, you could always use a little stretch when you first start out in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, you gotta get ready to like have a long day ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So that was a cool thing. This is just an example of one of the outpatient clinics. Um, so, you know, it'd be a large room, multiple beds. I think this particular one had something like 20 beds in it. Mm -hmm. uh, each bed had a curtain. So the patient would come in, lay down, put the curtain up, and then the doctor would come in and, you know, not a lot of um, space, you know, try to kind of fit everyone in. And so usually it'd be like doctor and like six students all hovered around one patient. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, personal space there is kind of uh, a limited, limited mm -hmm. commodity. Sure. This is one of our patients. Uh, she had cerebral palsy. And so she would come in and get a lot of scalp acupuncture. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the pediatric patients were the best. You know, you see these really? little kids getting acupuncture and they were so good. I don't know if I have another one, but uh, there was, she would like to take the needles out herself. The doctor would let, like, they oh, put a needle wow. in her hand really? and she would like to take it out herself. And like, you know, these patients, they grow up getting acupuncture they're so used to it. it's not the same there's no fear around the needles and things like that so interesting yeah it was really cool to see to see little kids like receptive and getting acupuncture and their parents bringing them in for it as well right uh this was in walmart believe it or not so chinese walmart yeah right. so in in china walmart is there and they have chinese herbs right there when you walk in and so I just thought that was amazing. It's like right when you walk in, there's tons of herbs like in, in the bulk section. Mm. So that was really cool. And what are these herbs? Can uh, you chrysanthemum back there, juhua. There's hawthorn berries back there. Where's back there? So uh, there's the one on the right hand side, the green back in the corner. I'm not sure what the green is. Oh, back there. then the white in the middle. The, the white right in the middle, side. that's chrysanthemum. Okay, and the left um, in the middle is what? Hawthorn berries. It's called and shanja. Okay. And then over here, these are like a uh, rose. It's and that's, Megui Hawk. that's the left in the, in the yeah, front? Yeah, the left, the front. And then in the, in the, right in the front? front is just uh, some chin pea, which is like a citrus type of citrus. Yeah, it looks like citrus. Yeah. Cool. So it was cool. You could just pick up little bags of it or scoop it into a bag. Also on the street, this is my classmate, Austin. He was really excited because on the street, they were also selling herbs, just mm -hmm. walking around. Uh, yeah. So it was, it was really cool. They also, you know, there was also independent pharmacies Mm -hmm. um, outside of the hospital clinic as well. But, you know, they say, like some of the students were telling us there that, you know, the quality is definitely different. So in the hospital, they have the highest quality herbs and somewhere like on the street corner, it might not be the best quality mm -hmm. because they don't like check for pesticides and things like that. Mm -hmm. We had some downtime. There's ping pong on photo. campus. It's, it's one so of my great. classmates playing ping pong with uh, some of our classmates. Always had a good time. In motion. And then if you can see, uh, there's a Chinese character in the back uh, <laughs> that sort of mirrors his movement yeah. uh, with his arm and his and his legs like that. It was, it's really great. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So, yeah, we would, you know, on lunch break or like after clinic or something, we would uh, play ping pong or, mm -hmm. you know, there was a, there's, there's lots of recreational activities going on. Mm -hmm. Some of the nurses are playing volleyball. I thought that was a fun picture. Yeah. Um, 
you know, there's basketball courts back there. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's good. That that mirrors that idea within traditional Chinese medicine that exercise and movement is just as important as the the treatments oh, that yeah. you're getting in the Absolutely. form of keeping your body healthy. Yeah. I think that's the end. Yeah, that's the end of it. All right. Um, I'll start with just um one quick question that I have about. Uh, what advice would you offer to those interested in going on this study abroad opportunity? Yeah, um, I think the, the best advice would be to learn a little bit of Chinese beforehand. Mm-hmm. I think that would be really great. Yeah. Um, also, pack a lot less than you think, because <laughs> a lot less. Yeah. So I, you know, I yeah. was like, oh, I'm going there for three months, and I got to bring all the stuff with me, mm-hmm. and it. Turned out I brought way too much stuff, oh. and you know anything that you could need is there, and it's pretty cheap. So mm-hmm. I wish I would have brought a lot, lot less because then traveling around, I mean you have a home base uh, on the campus, so you don't have to like bring everything with you, but just um, yeah, bringing it because you end up bring, wanting to bring a lot of stuff home too. Mm-hmm. So leave room in your bag to bring stuff home. Right. Did, yeah. did you need an adapter for a certain type of plug over there? You do. Yeah, you need an adapter for that. Also. Do you know the um, voltage? I don't remember. Okay. But if you go to the store, they have them. Um, it's like it's right. the same. They have like these like multi ones where you can mm, uh, change. Okay. Um, you know, just like with any international travel, you always want to make sure you have all your paperwork in order. You keep everything safe, um, even when you know when you're traveling around. Um, as far as like the clinical stuff, I I one of the things that I'm glad that I really did was I brought plenty of little notepads, things that were easily fit in my pocket, so I can yeah. take notes during. Um, the clinic if I saw things that I really wanted to ask or wanted to remember later mm-hmm. um, and then I kept the journal while I was there everything that I saw every day that's so smart yeah because I mean really that's something that I still look back on now if I'm like thinking about oh if, if, if I have a patient that has uh, you know anything that I saw in China I always want to reference that because I'm like oh you know that's an interesting you know, yeah. perspective that I yeah, don't, usually don't get to see around here right um, but yeah I think um, the other thing that I would also caution people about is that it can be like uncomfortable there sometimes. And I think, I think not, and it's not, I'm not talking about like socially, I'm talking about like physically uncomfortable. So like the beds were like plywood is so hard. Oh, and so that was something really challenging that I had to deal with when I first got there. It was the bed was like laying on a board. And so I had to go buy like blankets and stuff to like, puff up the, you know, yeah. the mattress yeah. and things like that. And then also like when you're sitting in the lecture halls, they're not comfortable chairs. And I think it's just, um, I don't know. It's, I don't know what it's, what it's, it's a, maybe a cultural thing. Just the, the mm-hmm. yeah. But that was something that I bothered me when yeah. I first got there. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It looks like we do have a couple of questions. Uh, the first is how are the hours of obligated clinic slash classes? Did you have weekends off yeah. or days off? Yeah, so we had weekends off. So it was Monday through Friday, um, eight in the morning until usually like uh, six in the evening. Mm -hmm. And then you usually have like a one or two hour lunch break. Um, And then the summer out when it gets hotter, they usually let you out a little bit early. Mm. Um, And you know, it's pretty, pretty easy though. Like if you need to go like you know they're they're totally okay with that like if you don't want to stay for the whole shift or mm-hmm. something like that um because a lot of a lot of the shifts you're just observing you're following the doctors around and so it's totally okay if you need to go back to your room to your dorm or whatever okay um let's okay. see and it looks and like the off. other question yeah. is oh yeah, sorry off. so yeah there's also you know if you're there in the summer there's a few holidays mm-hmm. that they have off um, and so you can have like long weekends or sometimes there would be like a week. I think we had a, at least a week off. Um, I forget what, what holiday it was. Um, mm. but we had a week off and got to travel a little mm. bit. So nice. yeah. Very good. And you mentioned there was both clinic time and class time. What was the approximate percentage of clinic compared to class? I would say it's like 80% clinic and 20% classroom. Yeah. So you're in okay. the, you're in the clinic most of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, every couple of weeks you'll have a lecture. Um, and it's, you know, the lecture will be like a guest lecture or someone from the faculty that will come through and they, and, you know, eat, they have different uh, specialties. So um, you can, 
you know, when you, before you go, you can communicate with them and let them know what you're interested in studying and they can kind of cater uh, some of those uh, lecture classes to, to, you know, your interests. Excellent. What was another one? Uh, and was the lecture taught in English? Uh, most of them were. And then there were a few doctors that their Eng they felt their English wasn't proficient, so they had a translator. And um, at times that can be frustrating sometimes with the translator, depending on who the translator is. But uh, I would say for the most part, it was fine. Um, and we were able to get the information that we needed from the class or from that doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, what, what were a few travel highlights outside uh, Zhangzhou? Yeah, outside of Zhangzhou. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kaifeng was amazing. Uh, it was a really cool old city. It was like a, gate, a walled city. Mm -hmm. That was one of the ancient capitals of China. Uh, they had some really cool old districts there. Um, my family background is we're Jewish, and so um, Kaifeng is famous for having a Jewish population there too. So we saw really? like a Jewish temple there. It was it was interesting, and oh, that's wow. pretty uncommon in China. Yeah. Um, also, there outside of uh, Zhengzhou, it was by bus it was a little hard to get to but there um there was a, a national site where um, they have statues of buddha that were carved into the side of a mountain uh, mm -hmm. they're huge and so it was really cool to see that it was um i can't remember the name of the city long long joe or something like that uh -huh. long joe um but there was a that was beautiful um also uh we went to beijing which was a big city amazing mm -hmm. uh, really fun um, lots of really cool art in Beijing, which I was mm -hmm. really surprised. It kind of reminded me of like New York or something. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also went to Xi'an. Xi'an was, mm -hmm. was another beautiful city. Um, some of the things that also, I forget to mention to be prepared, the air quality is not that great, especially mm -hmm. in Zhengzhou, uh, Beijing as well, that whole north uh, eastern part of China. So um, definitely, you know, I wore a mask if, if I was like out a lot, especially some of the hotter days when it was like really muggy because uh, it does get hot and humid there in the summer. Um, what what like, would you say um, in Fahrenheit? What would that temperature be like? Oh, 100 degrees. At least? Yeah, with, wow. with humidity. Yeah. Wow. And then, and then um, yeah, so it definitely, when we first got there, it was cold. It was really cold. Yeah, and what and, did that feel like? And it was pretty cold, like, I mean, in the 50s. Fahrenheit with yeah. humidity, so then it feels kind of. It was cold and rainy when we first got there. It was okay. like spring, but like really cold. And then okay. it started getting hot pretty quickly in the 80s and then 90s and 100s towards mm -hmm. the end of the summer. So, yeah, definitely the weather is interesting. Okay. Um, another really cool highlight was the Yellow River. Um, we got to go to like a small uh, farm, homestead kind of thing on the Yellow River and mm -hmm. ate lunch there and traveled around that that region too nice. is it's beautiful wonderful yeah, cool. um just a reminder oh it looks like we have another question what is the minimum time you recommend one stay to get a solid clinic or a professional experience we have the opportunity to stay four to eight weeks i believe yeah i think four to eight weeks would be pretty solid clinical experience um especially if you rotated you know maybe uh, every week to a different uh, area of the hospital you get to, you get to see a lot uh, purely just because of the um, the volume of patients that you're seeing so uh, even in a short amount of time you will definitely be able to experience quite a bit mm -hmm. of clinical uh, you know cl different cases also different doctors and their experience and their mm -hmm. treatment methods and, th and things like that so. okay excellent that's a great question and what were few of your favorite specialties so i tend to um tend to to kind of specialize in orthopedics so the twi na and orthopedics were my favorite mm -hmm. um but i also thought it was really really cool to see how they use herbs mm -hmm. it was a little bit harder to understand what because in china also the herbs that they use they use the same herbs but the way that they use them is different the formulas will be really long and, and complicated sometimes the clinics move so fast that we really didn't get the explanations that we need for certain you know formulas and how the her herbs are being used mm -hmm. uh, but i that, that's something that if i went back i'd want to like focus on a little bit more and see mm -hmm. yeah but yeah i think the twina was my favorite because it was um it was kind of like a mix between 
sports medicine and like chiropractic and mm-hmm. acupuncture all in one. And it was really cool to see that. That's cool. Yeah. Excellent. What's the biggest thing that you learned? What is the biggest takeaway piece from that trip? That's hard to say. There's so much, but I mm-hmm. think that uh, one of the biggest takeaways I could say was oh, I could s- just how amazing Chinese medicine is and the, yeah. and the different, how many facets it has. I mean, just seeing and seeing it in a hospital setting just really kind of changed my perspective of what it could be here in the States mm-hmm. uh, and what like a truly like integrative practice is like because yeah. we say that here but we're still very dis- disjointed I would say with um, mm-hmm. Western medicine and to see from the to see it happen from like the training level all the way up through the hospital level mm-hmm. where it's like students you know so these students are being trained in uh, as like Western medical doctors and they have to do all the TCM as well mm-hmm. and then seeing it how that that practical application plays out in the hospital is really uh, it's a really cool experience to, to be able to see that. Perfect. That's a great answer. Thank you so much. And I think that's all the time that we have. So thank you all so much for attending. And uh, we'll be sending out this recording very soon uh, once we process that and put it on YouTube. And of course, uh, if you have any more specific questions for Eric, I'd be happy to put you in touch. You know how to reach us at acttcmadmissions at ciis.edu. And this is the last webinar for 2018. So we'll see you in 2019 with a lot more um, community members, current students, faculty, staff members, just to talk a little bit more about um, their experiences and things that that you want to know as prospective students. Yes, thank you all as well, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye now. Bye.